All right, here we go. Tony Sunshine, welcome to Vlad TV. Thank you for having me, brother. Yeah, man, we got a legend in the building right now. Thank you, man. Thank you. So, so let's start from the very beginning. Uh, you grew up in the Bronx. I'm a Bronx native, yup. So this was like uh, the 80s, I guess? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been in the Bronx almost my whole life. Yeah, no, but I'm saying like in your teenage years, that was like the 80s. Uh, 90s. 80s, 90s, no, okay. Don't, don't make me seem like an old guy, Vlad. <laughs> don't do that to me, baby. All good, the 90s. So what was the Bronx like during that time? I mean, what can I tell you? The Bronx in the 90s was a, was a pretty tough place to grow up in. You know, uh, lots of drugs and, 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 you know, the crack epidemic and things of that nature hit. So, you know, it's pretty much survival of the fittest. And, you know, it, it was hitting everybody's home, including mine's. I mean, thank God my mother never got addicted to, to, to any heavy drugs that I remember, but it sure affected the way we lived and, and the neighborhood and things of that nature. So it was pretty rough. What do you think was the worst thing that you saw from the crack, you know, the crack epidemic? I mean, you know, I grew up with an alcoholic stepdad, you know, and uh, he pretty much secured the, 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 the bad times, you know. So we had to go through a lot of shelter systems and, 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 and stay with a lot of different people coming up and growing up and, and, and I had to see a lot of different things. You know, I had to see a lot of different people that I loved go through a lot of different changes and things like that, you know? Yeah. I mean, did you get involved in the drug game yourself? Uh, you know, as a youngin coming up in, in, in the hood and, and, and trying to survive and you, you dibble and dabble in a couple of things, but I, I won't sit here and lie and say I was a kingpin or, 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 or you know, I haven't made hundreds of thousands of dollars, but you know, we did what we did. Yeah, just sold, sold some money to get sneakers and so forth. Shit like yeah. that. Shit like I that. I feel you. I feel you. Well, you actually uh, knew Pun since you were a little kid. You, you grew up around him, right? Um, I grew up with, I, I grew up in Forest Projects, which is pretty much Joe's neighborhood as well. So I grew up around Joe and his guys. You know, I grew up admiring what they was doing and how Joe was moving, you know, as far as the DRTC thing. And, 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 and you know, Pun came later on, years later. And, um, you know, he used to play basketball in 23 Park with, 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 with the other guy and, you know. And so somebody introduced us, you know, and I sang some for Pun, and he took a liking to, to what I did. And none of us were really professional at the time. We were just a bunch of guys having dreams and, you know, things like that. So, yeah, Pun was definitely my guy. But I didn't grow up with him. I grew up in Forest Projects around Joe and his guys. Well, when you mentioned that, that Pun was playing basketball, I don't think people realize that Pun used to be skinny. He used to, you know, thing, look more like you than the pun that you right. know people know him for. Right. Pun, 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 pun. Uh, so I remember seeing pun in the neighborhood when he was sort of a, a, a fit guy, you know. And then I remember him disappearing off the scene for a while. And when he came back, he was like, you know, almost like three hundred pounds. But he was still shooting that ball like a pro. Like he was running up and down the court. And you know, he was a golden glove boxer. He boxed and you know, so he stood, he stood, he stood uh active at the time. So yeah. Okay. So like Big Pun was legendary for the jokes. Right. And the oh, practical man. jokes. The worst. The, the crazy shit. The like if worst. you could really remember just the stupidest, silliest thing that Pun ever did. So man, there's so there's just so many incredible funny stories, but I'll tell you one that that really is crazy. So there was this young boy, you know, and I, I I'm not really the abusive type of individual, so I won't throw his name out there like that. 
you know, but he was a young boy at the time and, 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 and you know, we had capital pun had capital punishment on and we was going on tour and we was doing what we was doing and you know, pun would take a liking to individuals that went through similar things that he went through. So this 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 young boy came up to us one time and he told us that, you know, he was in the street and that his mom was a crackhead and that he was going through certain things and he wouldn't eat. So, you know, Pun took a liking to the kid, took him in, gave him a room in the house and all that. Um, Pun gave him a little job washing the cars and driving around, things of that nature. So one day, we are on our way to Loud Records, and, you know, Pun decides that he's going to take the young boy with us. So we go to Loud Records, and Pun is shooting dice with Steve Rifkin. And, you know, they were gamblers. They joke and play. And I guess young boy failed to realize that Steve Rifkin and Pun had this incredible relationship. You know, they were in bed together. They they, they doing business and getting money. They're friends. So, uh, you know, Pun is cracking jokes and calling Steve Rifkin a, a Jew and a white boy and this and that. So Steve Rifkin turns around and says, I'm going to put you in the jungle in a gray suit, right? So it took everybody a second to get that. Pun, big guy, gray suit, jungle, elephant, ha, ha, ha. The young guy had told us on the way to Loud Records that he caught his mom sucking dick for crack, right? So Pun was like, wow, what a sad story, this, that, you know, and we, we, we consoling the kid. But when we get to Loud Records, remember... Steve and Pun are good friends, so they got that rapport where they could talk to each other that way. Young boy, you're a young boy. So when Steve said the joke, it took everybody a minute to get the joke. We laughed. Young boy laughed and was like, ha, 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 ha. He said he's going to put you in the jungle in a gray suit. Pun was like, shut the fuck up, nigga. That's why your mother sucks dick for crack. I say, yo, this dude is crazy. <laughs> your man Pun is wild, yo. Crazy. I remember there was a there was a story that I read when um, uh, I guess Pun invited Prodigy over, and and y'all was all hanging out. I'm not sure if you were in the room or not, but I guess like the whole you know the Terror Squad was hanging out with right. uh, with Prodigy, and Pun goes, "Hey, what kind of guns you like?" And he pulled out Pun pulled out his gun, and then everyone in Terror Squad started pulling out their guns. And yeah, it was I was like there. I recall that day. You were there? Yeah, I recall that day. I was the first one. <laughs> How many guns for promotional got out use that day? only? I, I mean, you know, we was young boys. I can't recall. Maybe a thousand. I don't know. <laughs> you know, um, that was that was our adolescent days, and we were coming up. And you know, back then we had a lot to prove. Being Latinos coming up in a, in, in 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 um a so called black dominated game. We had a lot to prove, and we had to move around, and we had to 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 uh, put a lot of work in, so to speak, to be taken serious. You know what I mean? So that's what that was there, but that's for promotional use only. <laughs> well, what was the obsession with guns back then? Um, because I, I, you know, I heard Pun had a had you a know gun this is obsession. this is the, that's a good question. The thing the thing for me is you know coming up. In the neighborhoods we come up in and being young, um, being allowed to watch certain movies like Scarface and King of New York and, 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 and New Jack City and, you know, coming from where we come from, those are the type of individuals we glorified. Why we glorified them? Because we didn't have role models to tell us that this was just movies. You understand? Which is the same, you know, like I go around talking to my guys that 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 rap, and I do it sometimes too. I jump on records and I talk crazy. And I talk crazy, but at the end of the day, when I leave that vocal booth and I go home, you know, I, I don't act that way when I get home towards my wife and my kids. I don't act like that towards my friends. So that has a lot to do with it. You know what I'm saying? The obsession with guns is 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 what we're taught and what we see and what we're trained to act like. You know what I mean? So I think that has a lot to do with the obsessions. Well, say hello to my little friend. Well, yeah, I mean, because you guys were called the Terror Squad, but that was not a made-up name. You guys really were. Yeah, well, I was sort of terrorizing. The baby. You know what? There. You know what, Vlad? Um, I can't, I can't sit here and act like I'm a super thug because I'm not. I can't sit here and claim to be a gangster because I'm not. A tough guy, I'm not. I'm just an individual that got into a handful of real situations and handled my business. But for me to sit here and act like I got this incredible rapport in the streets as a killer, as a gangster, as a tough guy, 
you know, that's not me. I'm more loved than anything. I'm the guy. I'm, I'm the guy that shows love and everybody loves because I'm a good dude. You know. What? Well, yeah, no, but I'm just saying, as a crew, like, like no one could really fuck with y'all. Because I don't oh, remember. Yeah, I think we were it was, serious it was about Pete, ours. Like, like Peter Guns, uh, I interviewed him, and on camera, he told me a story about like I think y'all was at the Apollo. We were performing at the Apollo Theater. And me and Pun were standing next together, next to each other. We were doing Cross Bronx Expressway. And ice kept coming out of the balcony. It missed me by an inch. Kept coming, kept coming, missing me. But like somebody up top was throwing ice at me and Pun, throwing ice at us. And I remember pointing up in the balcony saying, yo, homeboy, I see you. Don't get fucked up throwing that ice out the balcony because, you know, it was like a, a bunch of goons on pun team from the, from the Bronx and our team. Pun said, in five seconds, he's coming out of that balcony. In five seconds, this dude came flying out the balcony. I can't make that shit up. Pun had sent his dudes up there, and they climbed up the balcony and tossed them out the balcony. Yeah, we got banned. We got banned from the Apollo because of that, you know, but... um. In our defense, we was having a good time. The crowd was enjoying what was going on. And you know, we had this guy up there for all we know, he snuck some drinks in or something, he was drunk throwing ice. And you know, Pun politely asked for the lights to turn on. And you know, he said in a very serious tone of voice, I am not a rapper. If someone throws another piece of ice off that balcony, the whole top balcony is getting fucked up. And that person thought it was a joke. Till the lights came back on and he seen a couple of Spider-Men. You know, but that's that again, that that was just what we had to do back then to be taken serious. You know what I mean? I don't recommend it. I don't recommend it. Uh no, I was 13 years old when I stepped to Joe. So like I said, I grew up I grew up in Forest Projects. Um, you know, Terror Squad, the crew, Terror Squad was already, you know, um, an established name as far as a football team and and graffiti artists, break dancers, you know, things like that, young kids coming up. So it, it was spelled T-E-R-R-A, Terror Squad, you know. Um, and we had, I used to watch these guys do that and there was, you know, Joe had some friends that I started hanging out with as a young boy. And I, I sort of asked them, yo, I sing, I wanna sing, this is what I do, who can I talk to? And they was like, yo, so talk to Joe, you know we know Joe. So um, he encouraged me to talk to Joe. So at 13 years old, I went up to Joe. Joe already was doing this thing with the ITC and Showbiz and AG and them guys. And so um, I told him what I do. He asked me to sing something for him. I sang some for him, and the next day I was in his black MPV on my way to Relativity Records with him, and from that day on I was, you know, hanging out with him for a while. He took me to go see High Five when High Five was popping, you know, to try to get me a deal back then, but I was a young knucklehead, you know, and then, and, 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 um, my mother was kind of strict at the time due to the fact of the things that we were going through, and, and, and I guess she was afraid that I was going to take those routes. So I sort of had to wait like two more years before I could actually really come outside as an independent individual. So I, I had to wait my turn. So by the time I came out, uh, Pun was already back on the scene, shooting basketball out there, going back and forth. And um, maybe a few months after that, I met them, met Pun and talked with Pun and, and, and the other guy. And they formed Full Eclipse. And I became sort of like the guy that sang with them and and things like that. So I mean, it, 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 this is is a mesh of a whole lot of a whole lot of things. Where why people think that who discovered you, Pun or Joe? Where did you meet them, Pun or Joe? Well, I, I was Joe's guy first. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Is now, that, Pun ushered me into the game though. Pun opened those doors and said, you know what? You got a serious talent. It's time for us to bring you in. You know. Well, well, you didn't show up on, on Big Pun's first album. Uh, no. No. Okay. Technical difficulties 
Oh, you were supposed to show up on the album? Um, I was around, but I wasn't around. You know what I mean? I, got, I had got into some trouble when I left the neighborhood for a while and I wasn't around. And, you know, uh, they worked on Capital Punishment. They did that. Uh, I think that pun seen me somewhere. I forget how it happened, man, truthfully. But pun seen me and he was so happy to see me and, 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 and you know, the rest is history. I started hanging out with him again and Joe seen me and it was all love all over again.